Hey there, it's Michael J. And today's class is Santa 101. Now, I don't want to ruin anything for the little tykes, so this is an adult class. It's for the grown-ups. Okay? Old St. Nick, Kris Kringle, or Santa Claus, is not an old Dutch tradition brought over to America as we would all prefer to believe. You're Santa Claus, hide like a dolly. Santa Claus was essentially created by three men in New York during the early part of the 19th century, John Pittard, Washington Irving, and Clement C. Moore. John Pintard was the head of the New York establishment that created the modern American Christmas in the 1820s. He was the founder of the New York Historical Society and was instrumental in establishing holidays like Washington's Birthday, Independence Day, and Columbus Day. In 1810, he borrowed St. Nicholas, the patron saint of Greece and Russia, to become the patron saint of New York and paid for the promotion of the idea with this broadside. This illustration by Alexander Anderson shows a good little girl and a bad little boy, naughty and nice. Meanwhile, Washington Irving publishes his Sketchbook in 1819, short stories like The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle, and five stories about Christmas. In his book Knickerbocker Holiday, he appropriates Saint Nick and mentions him 25 times, he also makes him a pipe smoker. Irving's version of an old English Christmas is largely made up, and together with Charles Dickens' stories, forms America's image of Christmas. God bless us, everyone! Into this setting comes Clement C. Moore, a friend of Irving and Pintard, who writes the poem, A Visit from St. Nicholas. You know, the one that starts "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, "'not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse." You probably thought that that poem was a retelling of an age-old folktale, but not so. In that one poem, Moore distills bits from the Dutch. St. Nicholas Day, December 6th, Pintard's promotion of St. Nicholas as New York's patron saint, and details from Washington Irving's stories as well as two anonymous poems from 1821, one of which had Santa traveling by sleigh pulled by a single reindeer. From the Dutch comes the white-bearded figure in a red cape and bishop's hat. Moore turns him into a peddler, a common man, and shrinks him to the size of a jolly old elf who could fit down a chimney. <laughs> The Santa in the anonymous poem had Santa leaving presents for good children and a rod for the bad children so their parents could give them a whipping. More Santa leaves gifts for all and wishes everyone a Merry Christmas, a Christmas without the prospect of judgment. More Santa has eyes that twinkle, rosy cheeks, a figure that is plump, and a manner jolly. At the end of a visit from St. Nick, the narrator, who has been observing Santa deliver his gifts, makes eye contact just before Santa rises up the chimney. Santa lays a finger on the side of his nose. I had always assumed this was a magic gesture that caused him to fly up the chimney, but it is actually a meaning that has been lost to us through time. The gesture is borrowed from Irving's Knickerbocker Holiday. The gesture means Let's keep this to ourselves. In other words, we know I don't exist, but let's keep that between you and me. And so it has been a pact between parents and Santa forevermore. But how did this 1822 poem permeate the households of America? It was published in four almanacs of 1824 and reprinted in numerous newspapers. Everyone just picked up on the idea. Shops promoted the concept, and families adopted it. As the pretend, old-time tradition, it really wasn't. As soon as Santa was born, he was both commercial and anti-commercial, the two sides of Christmas. Besides Moore's description, Santa's looks grow out of the illustrations of two key artists. First, there is Thomas Nast, 
who first illustrated Moore's poem in 1841 and defined the look of Santa. Our 20th century Santa image is due to the artwork seen in Coca-Cola advertising by Haddon Sundblom in the 1930s. This simplified, streamlined image stuck. As soon as the media was developed, of course, Santa became the subject and star of records, radio, movies, and TV. Ready, Rudolph? Ready, Santa! The most meaningful of which has to be Miracle on 34th Street. It's about an old man who claims to be the real McCoy, even though he doesn't come from the North Pole. He manages to make believers out of the most cynical. So, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, and he was born in America. He's nearly 200 years old now, so perhaps we can truly justify his image as representative of an old-time Christmas, even as he sells gifts from Macy's. Christmas morn again. Peace on earth will come to all if we just follow the light. Fill, Fill your hearts, hearts with, with the Christmas, Christmas cheer, cheer, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. He's coming to town.